Are you ready for making your own AutoCAD AI bot? In this tutorial, you will learn how to interact with AutoCAD using an AI chatbot. So, by the end of this video, you will be able to build your own chatbot confidently to automate your AutoCAD tasks. If you want easy to follow steps for unprecedented AI interaction with AutoCAD, this is the right tutorial for you. You do not need advanced knowledge of coding or AI development. Everything you need to know will be right here. You will see how your chatbot can handle tasks from simple prompts to complex requests such as PDF printing. I am confident that this video is going to be a game changer for your skills. I am Ahmed and it's been a long time since I posted a video, but I've got something really special to share. If you are new here, please make sure to subscribe as I will be posting similar videos in the coming days. So. If you are ready to master AI in the CAD world, let's jump in and get started. Before we get started, here is what you need to have. You need to have a basic understanding of coding. I will be using Python language. Python is a high-level programming language known for its easy-to-read syntax it's widely used in web development, data analysis, artificial intelligence, and many other fields. You do not worry if you are not very confident in Python coding, as I will hold your hand. What I will do is create a chatbot that receives my prompt or instructions, which can be in a natural language, like saying, draw a line or draw a circle. Python will take the command from the user, send it to the AI model, the AI model will respond by writing a script that AutoCAD can understand. Python will receive the script and send it to AutoCAD. At that point, your command will be translated into a drawing. Enough theory for now, let's set up the development environment. You need an ABI account in ChatGPT. I chose the GPT-4 or Mini. It's not the smartest model out there, but I chose it because of its efficiency. You need Python. I work with version 3.13.1. If you have more recent versions, I think it's still going to work just fine. I will be using Visual Studio Code or VS Code as my editor. You are welcome to choose any editor you prefer. Before you start work on your code, I highly recommend installing the Python extensions in VS Code. You can find it from extensions on the left bar, then search Python, choose the one published by Microsoft, and install it. Now we are ready to create the CAD chatbot. From the Explorer in VS Code, click the new file icon to create a new file, and let's name it cadtry.py. You can name the file whatever you want. Let's get full screen to start coding. So, let's think of the Python functions I need to develop. I need to create a function that takes a command from the user, sends it to the AI model GPT-4, and returns a script. Let's call it get AutoCAD script from GPT. Also, I need another function that takes that script from the AI model and send it to AutoCAD to create the drawing. Let's call that function send command to AutoCAD. You can name the functions whatever you want, but it's recommended to use a name that clearly conveys their purpose to make your code more readable and maintainable. Finally, I need a main function that continuously asks the user for drawing commands and links the previous two functions to make a loop of work. So, back in VS Code, I created a get AutoCAD script from GPT function that takes the user command, a send command to AutoCAD function that takes a script, and a main function as I discussed before. I used the word pass to avoid errors and plan the functions before I go deeper in defining each one. If you notice, I used an additional two lines at the end. Actually, the if condition is not necessary, and you can call the main function directly. But as a good practice, these lines will make sure our main function 
only runs when you execute the script directly. Now let's cover two important steps, building the GPT prompt and later sending it to AutoCAD. Let's start with the function get AutoCAD script from GPT. This function is supposed to get a command as input. It then takes that input and adds it to a system prompt that tells the GPT how to turn, for example, draw a line into an AutoCAD command. Let's call the system prompt variable as prompt. In the VS code, first, let's create the variable prompt in the prompt you are telling the assistant what to do in plain terms, convert natural language drawing commands into AutoCAD script commands. You even show an example like drawing a line from 00, 00 to 0, 050 and add rules like do not include any extra explanations. Finally, you insert the actual command from the user into that string. You can customize this part of the code the way you want depending on what you want the chatbot to do for you. The AI model will respond with a script that AutoCAD can understand. So you need to store this script in a variable. Let's call it response. In the response variable, you will also define the GPT model type you want to use. I added another variable script to refine the response. I will talk about this in details later. Let's focus now on the response variable. So here is where you connect with the OpenAI models using the chat completion.create function. If you see error in your machine like this, it means the function from OpenAI is not yet defined. To resolve this, go to the starting lines in the code and type in import OpenAI to import the OpenAI library. If it's again underlined, this also indicates that the library is not installed in your system. So, head to the menu and choose Terminal and a new terminal, then type in pep install OpenAI, submit and wait until the installation is complete. Now, we go back to the code file. You can see that OpenAI is no longer underlined, which means it's now defined. In the dot create function, you define the GBT model type GBT for O mini and the system role, for example, you are a helpful assistant. This sets the tone for how the model should behave and you define the user role that uses the detailed prompt you just built in the previous step. Along with these messages, you set the maximum tokens you expect in the response and the temperature, which controls the randomness of the model responses. I recommend keeping the temperature with a low value like 0.2 to reduce response variability. This is where you instruct the ABI on how to generate your AutoCAD commands. Finally, you want to clean up the response before returning it. So you can use a new variable, call it script, and use the strip method to remove any additional spaces, tabs, or new lines at the end or at the beginning of the response. I also used choices with zero value to select the first response, just in case the AI model provides multiple responses. Next, we will define the send command to AutoCAD function. Now that you have your AutoCAD script, how do you send this script to AutoCAD? and make it listen to your commands. That's where the function send command to AutoCAD comes into play. Remember, this function takes a script as input, which is the same script that is generated by the AI model in the previous step. Back in VS Code, in this function, you can use the win32com.client.dispatch to create a connection to the AutoCAD application. It appears I need to import the library first, so early in the code type in import win32com.client. This library will open the door to the program so we can talk directly to AutoCAD. COM is a standard protocol. It interacts at the binary level. This means that different programs regardless of the language they are written in, can interact with the COM. One of these programs is the AutoCAD application. Now, 
you can call the active drawing of AutoCAD using ACAD.active document and make sure your AutoCAD is open. At this point, AutoCAD is ready to take the commands to draw. If you want to make sure that AutoCAD had a good time to get ready, you could add a short pause time.sleep1 to give AutoCAD a second to be ready for your command. Again, the time function is not defined. To resolve this, I need to import the time library. You then take the input script, clean it up using the rstrip method, and add a couple of new lines using the double backslash n. Those new lines are important because they signal to AutoCAD that the command is complete, much like pressing enter after you type in a command in AutoCAD manually. If everything goes well, print a message saying, sending the following script to AutoCAD, and then print the final script. You can skip these two lines, but I highly recommend keeping them as they show how the AI generated script will look like. After that, our script sent the command to AutoCAD using doc.send command. This is the moment where your drawing comes to life in the AutoCAD model. You could add another pause using time.sleep2 to give the program enough time to process and execute the command. And you can print a message saying command sent successfully. If you want to make the code a bit more advanced, you can add exception handling using a try and exception. This is helpful when say AutoCAD doesn't respond as expected. You want to know what's going on behind the scenes. So say an error happens in the execution of this block of code, a catch error will appear saying error communicating with AutoCAD. You can change the message and use any text you want here. Next, we will define the main function. Finally, in the main function, we tie everything together. You could start it with a starting message like enter your drawing command, and then you define the user input using the input method. This is where the user provides the command. I will use strip method again to make sure the input is clean before sending it to the AI model. Now you can use the functions you defined earlier. So a variable script will store the results from get AutoCAD script from GPT, which takes the user input. I will use an if statement. If the script is true, which means it has a valid value, then use the send command to AutoCAD function to send the script to AutoCAD. Or else, if the script is not valid, print a message failed to generate AutoCAD script from the command. Finally, to avoid errors down the line, do not forget to define the API key. So let's head to the line just before the first function and call openAI.API key equal, then paste here the key you generated from the API website for OpenAI. Now let's have our first try of the code. To try the commands, I have the VS code on the left-hand side of my screen and the AutoCAD open on the right-hand side. Once the app is run, it shows the message enter your drawing command. Let's try to draw a line between 0, 0 and 100, 100 and press enter. On the right hand side of the screen, the line appears just drawn in AutoCAD. And when you look back at the VS code, it displays the AutoCAD command and a final message command send successfully. This is because of the print functions I used earlier in the code, which are helpful for you to see how the code is implemented. Up to this point, the chatbot will work only one turn and in the conversation. To make this conversation continue, you can wrap the functions in a simple while loop. So while true, which creates an infinite loop, you need to think about a way to break the loop when you want to end the conversation. I thought of words like exit or quit, but here we have a problem. The user may enter these words with small letters or capital letters or a mixture. So how to avoid this sensitivity in writing these words, we can create a lowercase version of the input by applying the lower method. So whatever the user writes in the chat 
it will be converted to a lowercase and that will solve the problem. Now you create an if statement, if lower input has exit, quit, or you can include just the letter Q for quick exit. You are welcome to choose any words or letters you want here. So if the user inputs any of these, print out a message saying exiting conversation, and then you break the loop. I do not need the clear condition, so let's remove it. Now the program sits in a loop, asking you to enter a drawing command over and over again. You type in something like draw a line, and our script takes that command, send it off to the AI to generate a valid AutoCAD script, and hands it to AutoCAD to execute it. Now we are ready to run the final version of the code. Initially, before doing any actual commands, let's check if the conversation ends when using the exiting words. So I typed quit here and it appears to be working fine. It ends the conversation. To start the conversation again, you need to rerun the code. Now let's try draw a rectangle between 0, 0 and 200, 200. You can see how it prints the script sent to AutoCAD, then print out a message command sent successfully. That's pretty cool, but I can't see anything done in AutoCAD. Let me try this. Please zoom extent. Now you can see the drawing as the chatbot translated my message to zoom extent command in AutoCAD to show the rectangle. If you say, draw me a circle in the middle of the rectangle, let's say at center 100, 100 with radius of 100. It drew the circle as requested. Let's try drawing lines. Say, draw a horizontal line between 0, 100 and 200, 100. Then draw a vertical line splitting the circle between 100, 0 and 100, 200. Let's try something different. Switch to layout 1. As you can see in AutoCAD, it currently stands in the model space. It appears working fine. It switched to layout 1 view. Let's try printing it. Could you plot the layout? For printing, it did not succeed. So, I have done a few changes in the code to make it successful. I have included a function for printing with modified prompt and provided example for the AI to learn from it. I also did a small trick in AutoCAD by avoiding the pop-up messages like the plot window. You can do that from AutoCAD command line type in file data, then enter, set the value to zero and finish the command. Now, if I type in plot layout one and name the drawing as drawing 10, then submit, it now did the prompt successfully. You can see the PDF file is named drawing 10, exactly as I requested. These are just a few examples. You can be very creative in this and think of any process you do quite often and check if an AI bot can automate it for you. I can also show you the final chatbot when you do some user interface improvements. And by the way, this is done using Python language without the need for any other programming languages. And this is the final user interface, a very simple one using two buttons, one to send the commands and one to close the window and you need a chat box. When you submit the command, it pops up your message and the same for the AI response. Congratulations. This is the end of the tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and learned about Python and AutoCAD. There will be more similar content coming. Thanks for watching and happy coding.